So this is the Jun Molis X60 Bicolor RGB light. And if you're looking for a small compact light that packs a 60 watt punch, then this is a light you should definitely consider. This light is perfect for video creators, streamers, photographers, and anybody else who needs a little light with a lot of power. This video will be broken down into three parts. Part one, specs. Part two, photo shoot test. Part three, my opinions after a week of use. All right, let's get into it. All right, so Jun sent me this product for review. Hopefully I'm saying that brand name right. I apologize if I'm not, but thoughts and opinions expressed in this video are my own. Jun does not get to watch this video before I post it, and you're gonna get an honest review. All right, let's roll some footage as I talk about the Molus X60 bicolored RGB 60 watt LED light, and that's a mouthful. The Molus X60 comes with a segmented carrying case with what looks like a waterproof zipper. The light comes with an AC adapter so you can plug it into your wall outlet and never have to worry about the battery dying mid-shoot. It also comes with a USB-C to USB-C cable. Jeune claims this is the smallest 60 watt cob light on the market. The light itself weighs 321 grams, the light with the battery grip weighs 692 grams, and with the battery grip reflector and diffuser it comes in at a very light 810 grams. But what does that even mean from a practical perspective? This light is very lightweight and you can easily dual wield it with a camera in the other hand. Or if you're a travel vlogger or run and gun filmmaker, you have a very portable and easy to carry light at your disposal. You can even make your setup even smaller by removing the battery grip and plugging the light directly into a USB power pack which can sit in your pocket, which gives you an even smaller light to carry around with you for vlogging. Conveniently for longer shoots, you can power this light via the supplied AC adapter. And there's a handy battery charge indicator button at the top of the battery grip that I'm sure will come in clutch at some point since, in my battery test, with a light at full power, I only got 51 minutes of usage before I fully drain the battery. But again, you can always plug this light into AC adapter, use a USB power bank, or invest in more battery grips if you want to extend the runtime. All right, so when attaching the battery grip to the light, it's a very primitive technology. If you look in here, there's just basically a little screw head that fits into a notch in the battery grip and the screw head is just held in place with a little spring and a button, which is very, very primitive, but you just click it together like this. And um, there's a little bit of wobble in the battery grip. And to be honest, it doesn't really inspire much confidence. At first I was a little wary using it, but then I did a very scientific test here with a little shake to the right, shake to the left, a little shake it up, shake it down. And you know. Boy, that's really on there. I'll even try and pull it apart. And despite there being a little bit of a wiggle in there, it's on there pretty tight, so I wouldn't worry about that coming off at all. Okay, let's talk about the aesthetics. This is a beautiful looking light and the design language is really sleek and modern. And let's admire for a moment how small and compact this light is. It easily breaks down and fits into a small camera bag, not to mention it looks great paired up with a silver bodied camera like the X100V or the Sony A7C. All right, so let's do a noise test. How noisy does this fan on the back of the light get? This light has been running for about 15 minutes now. I'm doing a battery drain test to see how long the battery lasts. So this fan is revved up. It's going at 100%. So uh, let's put it up to the lab mic and listen. So that's what the fan sounds like close to the mic. But if I hold it at arm's length, which is how you'd usually be filming with it if you're using it for a vlog or something, can you hear it? I can definitely hear it in the room. But these mics have noise cancelling on them and I'm also applying my YouTube audio settings to this video. So let's put it up to the lab mic and listen. So that's what the fan sounds like close to the mic. But if I hold it at arm's length, which is how you'd usually be filming with it if you're using it for a vlog or something, can you hear it? Now, if I set this camera to, uh, what's it called, automatic audio, what will it sound like? So I'll be right back. All right, so now we've switched the audio from manual to automatic, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, watch this video right here. So, now the camera mics. Are they picking up the fan noise? They should be. And if I'm filming myself at a distance, I'm here using a 16 millimeter right now. If I, uh, yeah, that's there's 16 millimeter. If I zoom to 35, I can stand a little further back. Can you still hear it? Hold on, streetcar going by the studio window. Hold on a sec. 
course. All right. Can you hear the fan noise? All right, you never want to be filming with your camera in automatic audio anyway, but uh, in case you are, there you go. There's that test. Also worth mentioning is that this light has a ZY mount, allowing you to attach a variety of light modifiers. You can even buy a ZY to Bowens mount adapter, opening up a new world of possibilities. Jun sent me a mini softbox to test out with this light, which we'll be using at the end of this video, so stick around to watch that. I think it's definitely a huge plus to be able to use light modifiers with this little light. It gives you so many options. This light features dual wheel controllers. The wheels can be turned to adjust settings or pressed in to switch between modes. One thing I like about the menu is that you can single press the left knob to cycle forward through the menu and double press it to cycle backwards. I thought that was pretty smart. There are six pages in the menu. The first page lets you select your language and gives you some basic info about the light. The second CCT page lets you dim the lights and adjust the light's Kelvin temperature, which is probably the most useful setting with this light. The third HSI menu lets you adjust the hue and saturation of the light. You get 360 color options as you turn the right wheel. And if you get tired of spinning the wheel, you can always press in the button and quickly jump to red, green, or blue. Now, one of the big issues I have with a lot of LED lights is that they don't reproduce colors accurately. So we're gonna go through and take a look at all the colors. Right now, my camera is set to 55. 100 Kelvin, so it's daylight balanced. So all the colors we're seeing here on the wall should be properly represented when the video is recording. So right now we're at pink. Looks pink on the back of the screen. All right, now we're switching to like a pinky orange. Now we switch right to orange. In between here, like my wall is pink, but on video, it looks like it's orange around here, but the wall is like 100% pink. So the way camera sensors capture LED lights is a little strange. Orange, orange. Of course, there's a hot spot in the middle because the light is darker. I have this light set to 100% power right now. Okay, it looks about right. The yellow looks accurate on the screen. Now we're shifting towards the light green, greeny yellow. Yep, yeah, looks good. More greenish, yeah, looks good, looks good. We're gonna keep rolling now. We're into more of a, like a lime green. This looks good on the screen too. Hey, okay, more like bluish green. Yep, yeah, bluish green aquamarine. There we go. And now blue is the one color that seems to give th these LifeX light bulbs a big problem. And here, this is nice. We get a nice light blue. Now we're lightening up more towards purple. Oh, look at this. This is interesting. So here on the wall, I'm seeing purple but on the screen here, it looks to be blue still. It's a violet, not purple, violet, I would say. Now we're going more into purple. Yeah, and now it looks more purple on the screen, but there's this like weird blue outline around the purple. If we turn a little more, we get pink. Although it's, it's more of a purple on the wall, it looks pink on the screen. So it looks, on the screen, it looks like pink here and purple on the outside, but on the wall in my eye, it's definitely purple. Now we're moving to pink. All right, so there you go. That's what you can expect with the, uh, the RGB colors out of this light. The fourth menu gives you RGB values so you can dial in the exact color you want. And this is super handy when you're dealing with brands who have exact color palettes so you can match your content to their color palette. The fifth menu gives you FX options like bad bulb, SOS, lighting, police siren. You can adjust the speed and the brightness of the effect. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's another option which changes depending on which effect you have selected. So you get a little more customizability. The only thing I wish was different is that effects like lightning or paparazzi were on some sort of random interval. So it didn't look like the lighting effect was on a loop. All right, so we're in uh, the sixth menu option, which is music, and you can get the light to strobe to the beat of the music, which is pretty cool. I guess if you're making a music video or some kind of montage where you want flashing lights, this might come in handy. And the cool thing is you have seven options and you can pick which uh, colors you want in each one of the seven slots. And then you can pick how many of those seven colors the light is gonna flash. So if you set it to one, it's only gonna flash the first color over and over again. If you set two, it's only gonna, it's gonna cycle between the two uh, first and second slots. But the cool thing is you have seven color options to choose from or customize and then the light will flash those colors. So if you're shooting a music video that has a specific color theme, you can set the light to flash with that color theme. So that's kind of cool. And uh, that's the menu. 
All right, this video is getting way too long, so I have to sacrifice a little bit. I'm not gonna do a full app tutorial, but basically there's an app for this light. You can do all the things you can do in the menu, but on the app with the control of a, you know your phone in the palm of your hand, which is great. But the real benefit to the app is that if you have multiple lights, you can control multiple lights with one app, and that makes things super, super easy, especially if you have a video set up with let's say a backlight, an edge light, a hair light, a key light. You can control all those lights from the app. I wanted to test out this light, so I called a model over to the studio to see what this light could do. I was thinking if this little light can handle a photo shoot, it's gonna find a permanent home in my camera bag. For the first look, I did the standard one light setup with the light up and to the right of the model. This creates some shadows on the model's face and background that add depth and character to the image. I took the grid off the modifier as it was creating too much of a spotlight. I think this light modifier just isn't big enough to use a grid with, but anyway, that's just my opinion. I was able to shoot at f1.4, 1 25th of a second, and ISO 200, which is really respectable. Overall, I'd say I'm really happy with the first look. I often like to put lights behind my subject to create visual drama in my images. Sometimes lights are way too intense and completely wash out the image. I'm happy to say that the Molus X60 creates a good visual effect without dominating the image. I was able to maintain my f1.4 aperture at 1 25th of a second and ISO 200. And I gotta say, I really like the glow that's created by the light. This is pretty cool. Although, I mean, obviously with no light on the subject matter's face, her face is a little bit dark, but you get the picture. For the third look, I changed things up and used diffused window light as my main key light and set up the X60 behind the model as a hair light giving her a nice ethereal glow. It's a fun light setup that adds a unique sense of intrigue to a shot. I also set the Kelvin temp on the light to be slightly warmer than daylight to give her a nice warm glow. For the last look, I switched out the mini softbox for the reflector diffuser kit that comes standard with the light. I set up the light close to and just above the camera with a warmer Kelvin temp to minimize the length of the shadows and create a warmer feel to the images overall. This light modifier kicks out a more intense light, so I bumped up my shutter speed to 250th of a second to compensate, but you can also just lower the power of the light. So far, I have to say I'm really loving this light and it's gonna definitely find a home in my camera bag. All right, so now let's take a look at this light from the perspective of somebody who streams. This is uh, with the uh, little soft box diffuser thingy. And uh, with the grid, you can see it's projecting a bit of a spotlight right here on me. And there's a little vignette, like I get darker here. So let's take this grid off and see if it gives a wider spread. It should, yeah, there we go, definitely. But it's brighter, so we're gonna have to bring the power down. Oh, too much. There we go. So yeah, with, without the, uh, the grid on the softbox, you get a wider spread. You can shoot light over your whole body, and then you can try and feather the light too if you want it softer or whatnot. But uh, yeah, I would say that works pretty good. We're at ISO 400 f2.8 with a 16 to 35 millimeter lens, but this is full frame. How does it work on a small little sensor like this? All right, so now we're filming with the DJI Pocket 3 and I have the light turned away from me. So you're probably seeing a lot of grain and it's not looking the greatest, but if you add some light to it, the camera should drop down the ISO and we should be properly exposed and looking a lot cleaner. So this kind of light, this portable setup is definitely good for somebody who shoots with action cams or small censored cameras in dark situations. It gives you just enough light to illuminate yourself. and. Uh, of course, this tiny little screen, I can't really see anything on it, so I'm gonna have to pop it on the computer. And if it looks odd to me or whatever I said doesn't make any sense, then I'll, uh, I'll come back and correct myself. But if not, let's move on to the next scene. All right, so now we're filming in studio. We have uh, sunlight coming in through the window. All the other lights in the studio are off and we're just using sunlight to expose me. Now, the thing with this, it's only a 60 watt light, but does it have enough power to uh, act as a fill light and it does, and we are currently at 1% power, so let's knock this all the way up to 100% power. And yeah, it provides a little bit more than, it provides enough light. I'd say it provides enough light, not a crazy amount of light. Hold on, we weren't at 100%. Let's keep turning, now we're at 100%. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's definitely enough power. We're at ISO 800, F2.8, 50th of a second, and then we can even turn the variable ND to knock a little bit more of the light out and we can create this kind of effect. So here we go. Now let's test one more thing because the clouds are coming and that is a backlight situation or backlit situation in studio. So this is probably one of the toughest things here. We have all the light coming from behind me and there we go. We can illuminate ourselves with this light using a window. So there we go. It's, uh, it passes my test. 
All right, so let's talk about my opinions on this light. So far, I'm very happy with this light, but there are some issues. First big issue is this case it is upside down. The handle is on the wrong side. There's a reason why briefcases have handles on the side that <laughs> flips open. So the zipper should come around the other way. You open up the case. Let's say you have something loose, you know, like Allen keys or something you put in your pockets here. You close the case. <laughs> The case, the pockets are upside down because the handle's on the wrong side. So if you're actually carrying it by the handle, anything you have in the pockets that isn't light is gonna slip out. And of course, this light has a fan in it. And if something falls into that fan, you turn it on, it jams, I don't know. It's just, it's just gonna be a pain in the butt. So be careful what you put in the pockets. The other issue with the case is the fact that it has a handle. It really should have a shoulder strap because if this is a lightweight, portable light that you can carry with you anywhere, I mean, you want the camera, in one hand and you don't want to have to hold the case you can just put it on a strap and you can shoot and you maybe pull the light out use it put it back and keep shooting so i think this case would be a lot why is that on so i think the case should be or case would be a lot better if it had a strap so I'm just going to move on i'm not going to talk about the case anymore all right so here's the other frustrating thing i found with the light and that is the fact that the ac and usb power inputs on the bottom of the light are too close to the thread mount for attaching the light to some sort of plate or tripod or something like that. So depending on how you're attaching the light, you could be blocking your power input ports, which is what happened to me when I tried to set this thing up on my video rig. I, I figured out a way now, I had to buy some small rig parts. But the thing is, is like those power ports should be on the front or the back of the light so they don't block you from mounting this light onto something with the plates, which is just, I don't know, it's just silly, it's frustrating, doesn't make any sense. And since this light only has a runtime of about 50 minutes at full power, uh, you definitely need some kind of power input to keep this light, light going to film like YouTube video stuff like this or streaming or that kind of stuff. So just something to keep in mind. All right, and the thing I found absolutely most frustrating about this Molus X60 light was the screen on the back. It's just the font is too small, the text is too small, it's hard to read. Like here we have a Wii light, which has the exact same size screen on the back. Here, I'll put up some B-roll here so you can take a look. The screens are exactly the same size, but the font on the Wii light is bigger and bolder and easier to read. And it just, if you're glancing at your light, you wanna be able to see what settings are there nice and fast without having to like go in and take a look and double check. So hopefully in firmware, Jun can make these uh, the font on the back screen bigger and bolder. All right, and the last thing I wanna talk about is light fall off, and that's just something to be aware of. It's not a negative, it's just all lights of the size, even like little lights like this, it's all about light fall off. So what happens is you have, let's say, what can I build a graph here? This is light power and this is distance. So as you get further away from the light, the power starts to drop and then it just falls off. So for example, right now I'm close, and as I get further, and it looks like I'm further than I really am. I'm just about six feet away from the light and I've already darkened up completely. You know, I go further back, I get even darker. So the light doesn't travel very far, especially when using a diffuser. I'm usually shooting videos for YouTube with something like this. This is a lot bigger and it gives you a bigger, softer, more diffused light. So I'm not saying one's better than the other. They just have different use cases. So depending on what your needs are, you should get the light that's right for you, or you can get maybe a couple of these X60 lights and place them around and you'll get more diffused light. And of course, if you're using the app, you can control all the lights at the same time with one app, so that's handy as well. Now, the big question is, should you buy this light? Now, personally, I feel like if you're in the market for a short range light that's really good, produces really good light, doesn't have flickering issues, is relatively light, and I'm gonna to touch on that again because that is awesome. You have RGB lights, you have Kelvin temperatures, you've got light modifiers, you have AC power input, you have USB power input, and the battery, I mean, it's decent at what, about 51 minutes, and you can also get replacement battery grips so you can add more batteries to your set so you can go even longer. So if you're in the market for a light like that, I think this is an absolute must buy. Go get it, use it, you'll love it. Personally, so far, I'm really enjoying it. I mean, there's obviously those issues we talked about earlier, but. Overall, I think it's a fantastic product. For me, what I think the best feature of this light is, is the size. It's a 60 watt light in a small, tiny, compact size that produces great light. You can put the light modifiers on it, but it's the size and the weight that's really appealing to me because I can just throw it in my backpack. I can throw it in a pocket, a jacket pocket. If you have a purse, you throw it in a purse or a bag or whatever. And it's pretty small, it's portable, it's lightweight. You can take it with you anywhere. If you're going on vacation, you're travel vlogging, 
food vlogging, whatever the case may be, anytime you need a light, you can just pull it out and start filming because it's so small. And if someone tells you to turn it off or whatever, you can just turn it off. It's not like a huge bother. It's not like you're setting up a big light or anything like that. So for me, that is awesome. I'm looking forward to actually taking this out downtown and doing some kind of outdoor shoot at night downtown with like a shallow depth of field, bokeh balls in the background and using this light on my camera as the primary light for the exposure. And uh, that's gonna be a lot of fun. And the cool thing is it's just, it's an easy setup. You just get a little L bracket, attach it to your camera and you go and you shoot. And uh, yeah, so I think that is the biggest selling feature for me is the uh, lightweightness and <laughs> that's a word, <laughs> lightweightness and portability. All right, that brings us to the end of the review video. If you have any questions about the Molos X60 Lite, leave them down in the comments down below and I'll try my best to get back to you as soon as possible and answer all your questions. And if you're into photography, videography, photography and videography gear, photography and videography tutorials, definitely subscribe to the channel because that's what this channel is all about. And I will see you guys in the next video. Done.